to lose a couple of years. Last year, I think we lost to the Scarlets there, and everyone expected us to win as well. So again, there's a lesson we would have, we would have taken out of that visit to, to Wales as well. And to be fair, I mean, it's uh, it seems that people always expect, but I mean, look how close these games have been. I mean, you look at games even, you know, look at Benetton, how they've done this year. Benetton, at the beginning of the season, people would have thought on other teams, would have thought that's one game that they probably could target, and they've, and they've lost it. You know, look at the Stormers, they went on a four-game tour to, to Europe in the beginning, they lost all four games. And that's a team that played in two finals, won one and lost one narrowly. So I think the one thing that has happened to the URC is that they, there's no there's no game where you can generally think, listen, we just got to arrive and, and win. Um, and they would have had a lot of time to prepare as well. Don't, don't, don't kid yourself, Anthony. They, they knew they've got us, they've got three weeks to prepare. They know they don't have whatever players they don't have due to international duty. I have no doubt that they'll be prepared. I mean, they'll be as well prepared as, as any team we play against. And then, you know, without talking ahead, we could make it Leinster. And, you know, Leinster have been a team that they, they beat us comfortably when we went there the first time in the Viva Stadium. Um, and that was when they picked their, their main guns. It will be interesting to see, you know, once we get through this week, about what challenges lie ahead for us. But it, it could be one playing two, and that's also nice halfway through the season. To judge yourself and, and measure yourself against a team like that. Um, they would obviously have their significant players back as well. It would be interesting to see that. Well, I'm not sure. You know, I mean, again, it's, it's one of those because the next week they play Leicester Tigers in a, in a must win top 16 game. And they do put a premium on, on, their, on, their, you know, on the European Cup. Now, that doesn't mean for one minute they're going to now underestimate anything and put, uh, put another team in. So I suppose that the, the challenge they have is what all teams have, is which team should you run out with, you know, which ones, which players do you rest, which ones do you keep game ready. Some guys have played a lot of rugby now in the Six Nations. You know, they are game ready. Do you give them more games? But again, those those things we'll only be able to find out once we we see the team we're playing against. Like just on the, on the injury front, uh, Cameron and Ulrich, are they ready to yeah, go? Yeah, so Ulrich will go with us. He'll go with us. He's probably not ready for, for the first game. I mean, he, again, uh, he probably is if I needed to play him in a, in a one-off game. Uh, Cameron won't draw with us. We'll leave him at home here to get... What's well, his injury? So, what, eh? uh, injury. Oh, well. just his Amy. Oh, okay. you know, his Amy and it's okay. taken a bit longer than... Uh, so, yeah, he, I mean, yeah, he, and he wouldn't be ready even if we wanted to risk him. You know, Amy's are, especially for a player like him, that, that got a lot of pace. It would be wrong of us to try and push him too quickly. So he'll stay here and hopefully he'll be ready by the time we get back uh, to play against Leon. And a guy like Yannis, how far is he from? Same, same. And I would say same. Okay. Any, any, any day now, and I'm talking about post, post this tour. Mm. Uh, but again, you know, he's been out for so long, I don't want to force him back in and then have a relapse when we start again. Yeah, um, Yesterday, uh, when you spoke to me, so, uh, Jake, you said that uh, you guys uh, you haven't perfected the game, you haven't played the perfect game yet. No. I just wanted to find out what what would that look like in, in, in your opinion for the Bulls? Yeah, you know, look, I mean, uh, it's, I'm glad he says that because, I mean, as coaches, you always want to get that perfect game. It's like a goal score. You want to shoot 59. Right? I mean, now you want to shoot 57 or 58 because people are shooting 59. And, you know, when you told people years ago that you needed to break 60, it was almost like unfathomable that someone could shoot under 60 in a golf game. And so the perfect rugby game for me is where we do everything as accurately as we prepared it for in a game. Now, you know, if you look back at the Stormers game, we scored four tries, you know, we kicked the ball 31 times. Now, if you had told people that you kick the ball away 31 times, and you score four tries and you get a bonus point, it would have been, it would have been there's no way that that happens in a rugby game. So I think the answer to your question is, the perfect game for me is finding a way in which you prepare to beat somebody uh, and then playing that game perfectly against the opposition. That's the perfect game. And it changes, because what you do necessarily against a team in wet weather that's got a scrum, uh, or you play against a team that's dry weather that's got a good liner, that games looks completely different. And, that, and I, think that's what, I think that's what he's trying to get to, is we've got to, we've got to get, become good enough to play different ways against different opposition and sometimes within the game change it because that's us part of the real good teams and the real good players are the ones that can adapt while things are happening around them in that game so i know it sounds a little bit a sort of round and about answer but you know there is no perfect game that you just rubber stamp i think it happens it happens on the run from week to week and it happens in the game itself Coach. Um, the recent break, was it one of those where you get a chance to work on the centre and stuff? Yeah. Or 
we're sort of through disruption at the moment. No, I'd say a bit of both, eh? a bit of, not, not disruption, a bit of both, a bit of refreshing, because I think we need a bit of refreshing, especially over that last time, this, this time last year, you know how difficult it was for us. After Christmas, you know, I'd got sick, um, and I could just sense that we were almost in a hole. And the learnings are that we got out of last year is we needed a break, the breaks come, We've done really well into that break. You know, would have been imagine if we'd lost three, four games coming into the break. It's a very different. So it's been both two things. One, it's given us time to freshen up, but also give us time to tweak a couple of things we need to do in the next block. Because as I said, the next month you go Dragons away, Leinster away, Leon here, and you could play Northampton away or Munster in the quarterfinals of it. That's one month of of real intense rugby. Um, and but but as I said in the beginning of the interview. But with a lot of a lot of rewards if you if you do well in this one. Thank you, Graham. Okay, Artie with the final questions. Oh, no, no, no. You're good. Okay, Artie. Yeah.